Good morning and welcome to Rusal Live. Instead of being behind the scenes today, I'm actually behind the scenes and in front of the camera. So we're gonna do it all today. Uh, welcome from Pensacola, Florida. My name is Nicholas Giberson with Rusal Education. We've got my wonderful model, Scott, man Chase on the camera. Today, we're gonna go over one of the Rusal classics, the executive contour. So as you can see with Scott's hair, natural right now, no product in it. I kind of combed him out so you can see what his hair is actually doing, what the texture is doing, what his hairline looks like, what his density looks like. Check out his neckline, it's kind of squirrely. we got a kind of crazy growth pattern back there. We're gonna taper that out, of course. We'll never ever block a neckline. And you can kind of see the, the natural way that his hair has. So he wants to keep the top a little bit long, so I figured we'd do an executive contour. So we're gonna be working just as we would with every other Rizal classic haircut, baseline down, and we're gonna get into it. So take my water, a little bit of the hair tonic, thoroughly saturate Scott's head and hair. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. Since it is just me this morning, it might take me a minute to get to your question. If I don't answer it during the presentation, I'll go back and answer any and all questions afterwards. And I will stop periodically during the broadcast to check out you guys' questions. Let me know where you guys are watching from. As always, you guys know the deal. We do this once a week, every week. I just got back from Tulum, Mexico. That was a wonderful trip. Uh, I just got married to my beautiful wife, Tasha Bronson. She's at work today. So this is my first day back behind the chair. And I'm excited to be here for you all today. All right, nice and saturated. As Rob the Bloody Butcher says, anything you can do with water, you can do with product. So let's check out his hair and see what it wants to do. So combing through it, he can get some pretty good volume. I don't remember the last time we cut Scott's hair. It's been a couple of months. It looks like it'll let me do pretty much anything. I know it will let me do pretty much anything because I cut his hair quite often. Or I used to. All right, so first things first, just as we start all of our haircuts, we're going to set our primary parting. And we're gonna do that by following his natural hairline to the recession. And we're gonna go down and around the center back of Ovial Sipla. Nice and even pressure on my comb, down and around, dropping. I'm gonna pinch the hair that I'm gonna comb away from to ensure that I have a nice clean parting. Comb that in there, nice and clean. And while it looks like a curved line, I assure you it is a straight line, we're just going rounded down and around the head. The only thing I would see is that I might drop this. I will drop this just a little bit lower. I want to save some of that weight in the back of the crown area. You want to make sure that your primary parting is exactly where it needs to be. Because if you mess up your parting, the entire shape of your haircut is going to change. So once you do the right side, Go ahead and do your opposite side. I start on my right side because I'm right hand dominant. So if you're left handed, start on your left hand side. Same thing, straight back, down and around and meet in the middle. And then clean it up as needed. I'm very excited to be here today. I haven't done a Facebook Live in a while. I've actually uh, switched to more of a back of the house position. So it's really exciting to be back here and teaching for you all today. 
we've had a great lineup of educators this year doing Facebook Lives. And we're going to have an even better one next year. Especially with our international team that we've just added from our last training in Rotterdam a couple weeks ago. We've got some really good talent, domestic and international, but I'm excited to get a bunch of our new people on the schedule for next year. So we're going to check out balance. Clean it up a little bit again. All right, just getting back in there. Checking the comments. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for letting me know where you're watching from. Really appreciate it. So happy to have Flat George with us when we were in Saloon. Shout out, George. Hope you're doing well. And again, just make sure that your baseline and your primary parting are exactly where you want them. Feel free to take as much time as you need to actually set it. And also check from the front. We're checking for balance here. Scott's front hairline is kind of squirrely here. So I'll actually bring it up a little bit more. We're we growing out of crop. What was the last cut we did? Uh, last thing we did was a scumbag buggy. Okay. Uh, like so about two months ago, we did a scumbag boogie on Scott, so we're growing that out. So there's no telling what I did way back then as far as how I cut that. So a little bit more balance. Let's get started with our baseline. <clears throat> All right, so our baseline. Baseline is how we start all of our classic Rusal haircuts. We're gonna use a clipper comb. I'm gonna use a standard clipper. I like my Babylo Slow Pro. I got my lever closed. Having a closed lever actually enables you to have a little bit more tension on the hair. We like to think that tension equals accuracy when you're cutting hair. Where my body position goes, my feet are shoulder width apart. Pump up the chair just a little bit so that the area that you're working when working in is between your collarbones and your belly button and your workspace. And the tops of the teeth of the tips of my comb are going to be facing straight up. And I'm going to make my first cut directly above the ear. Right here, it's going to be the widest, flattest part of the head on the parietal ridge. So we're going to go up, comb everything up to my baseline, lock my chair, everything up nice and square. So we're 90 degrees if you were to set a marble or a rock on this panel and it would not move. Scott wants to keep a lot of the length on top. So what that tells me is that I have to keep his baseline somewhat longer than I normally would if I were going to do like a skin fade on the sides. The length of your baseline will directly correlate with the length that's going to be on the top of the head. So just something to consider unless you want some massive disconnection if you're doing a quiff then you can go really short. We're doing an executive, so we want a little bit more length. Come in, pull out up at 90, and we're gonna cut. Really set that in. Move in front, check my guide right here. One thing that I like to do whenever I'm teaching or whether I'm cutting hair at the shop, is I always like to have contrasting colored combs to the workspace that I'm working in. So if you had Lighter hair, I'd use a darker comb, his darker comb, darker hair, so I'm using a lighter comb. I made my first cut. So now I'm just going to half step, locking the chair in the position that it's in. I'm going to half step to this corner right here. I'm gonna continue making my cut for my baseline. So now here's my guide. My guide, teeth still straight up. And I'm cutting. Again, bring it up. There's my guide. 
I'll cut towards you so you can see it, but normally I cut the direction that I'm trying to go to. Half step. Now I'm in this back crown corner section. Here's my guide. Again, normally I'll cut this way, but so that you can see, I'll cut to my guide. Teeth are still straight up and down. Another half step. There's my guide. And my last step. Cutting down, mirroring my primary parting with my baseline. We might have a slight corner in the back in the occipital area. That's totally fine. We can knock that out when we get into our blending scissors and the refinement phase of our haircut. So as you can see, we've started to establish our baseline right here. I'm gonna break and check for questions real quick and I'll be right back. All right, we do have a question from our viewers on YouTube and the question was, were there any tips on finding the ultimate part line? Trying on myself and can part on many places. All right, so when I'm checking my parting, before I get into my baseline, what I like to do is I like to take two combs, one behind the ear, one on the apex, and I like to create that nice square shape. If you split that at the 45, you're gonna find your parting. So if you'll check that, once you set your primary parting, it can ensure that you have the right placement for your parting. All right, continuing with our baseline. Now all we're gonna do is continue working from the top, the baseline, down to the hairline. And we like to work this way from the top down because it adds a, it acts like a safety net for the top so we're not going too short. A lot of the times we'll see new barbers fresh out of school and if they're not taught, taught this technique, a lot of times they'll go straight in just close clippers and put in their bald line if that's what they're doing for their haircut. And they'll go straight in and put in their one guard area where they're debulking. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's how you were taught how to cut hair. But the way that we cut hair with Rusal, then we work from the top down to ensure that we can build up our shape by working in horizontal sections from the baseline down to the hairline. And if you need to go shorter, you can go shorter on the back end of the haircut. So comb up, pull out, here's my guide, and we're gonna cut. So above the ear, moving forward, there's my guide. I got my guide beside me, I have my guide above me. And I keep cutting, half step over. And now my comb position, again, is parallel, mirroring my baseline, my primary parting. I'm gonna cut, half step over. Now I take my step before I put my comb in the hair, so I'm not making any weird minor adjustments and messing up what I'm holding. Here's my guide. Half step. And continue cutting that baseline working down. I, coming off of Veterans Day weekend, I like to think about things when I'm cutting hair and systems and having a structure in place. At the last training we just had, you may or may not know him. His name is Ronnie. Uh, poor Vita Barbering on Instagram, Uncle Ronnie. He said this acronym that's something very familiar to what Scott and I most likely have when we were in the military. He said, Ronnie said, keep it simple, scumbassadors, meaning when you have a system in place, it's a system for a reason. So I'm not jumping all over the place doing the haircut. I'm staying within the box of that system and keeping it nice and simple. In the mil our military days, the acronym most likely was keep it simple, stupid. But nobody's stupid. So I like to think, keep it simple, silly. <clears throat> keep, keep it simple, stylist. Keep it simple, scumbassador. So nice and easy. His hair's drying out. Go ahead and wet him down just a little bit. Wake him up a little bit. He's got the sleepy boy. All right. So we've already worked our baseline. We've got our second section. Now we're getting to what we like to call zone one. So you have zone one, two, three, and then zone four being on the top of the head. 
went from zone three to establish our baseline. Zone two is that midsection. Now we're getting into zone one, which is gonna be around the temple and then working our way down into the nape. All right, again, I apologize for the brief pauses. I'm just making sure everything's good with the stream and the comments. There's our guide and we're gonna cut. Moving forward, our guide, our guide, and we're going to cut. The only minor adjustment I would make right here is that I'm going to get in to where sideburns are, bring the angle of my comb at a different angle, coming down instead of square, and then I come up and clean that up as well. So I've got the zone one right here. Now continue, half step. Here's my guides and we're gonna cut. So when you're using clippers, if you're new to it, when we're doing clipper over comb work and doing any sort of clipper cutting, we have three different hand positions that I like to talk about when we're talking clipper cutting. We're doing clipper over comb work and we're working on the side of the head. We have a position, a hand position called the fanning grip. If you were to take your clipper straight off of a table, grab it and move your thumb to where this indentation is, that's a fanning grip. So we're gonna cut like this. If you're doing more freehand clipper sculpting or if you're doing fading, you'll hold your clipper like this, which is more of a traditional freehand grip. Then you also have your pencil grip, if you're doing any sort of flat top work like this. And then when you get into your contours and your edging, you have a stamping grip. So for clipper over comb work, we'll always do a fanning grip. Unless it's uncomfortable for you and your thumb doesn't work, uh, then feel free to switch your grip up. So still working. Again, there's my guide. And now I'm starting to get into his taper. I will come in and then I pop my teeth out so I can still see the tops and the tips of the teeth of my comb. If I were to come in and not pull the teeth out, I'm gonna leave a giant gap there. And that's not what I want to do. I'm gonna be creating this line of demarcation. I'm gonna be building weight. I don't wanna build weight right now. Not like that anyway. So I pull my teeth out, make sure everything's nice and clean. And it's also all right to change the position of your comb around the ears and your nape area as well. So Scott's hair grows up from his neckline right there. So I can come down and cut this way. I will just let you all know that Scott has a sensitive neck. So if he gets all red, I didn't beat him up. My clippers aren't set super tight. I'm actually not one to really zero gap my clippers. For me, it's more of just a, a personal choice or if I'm at a hair show and I'm working, and maybe something breaks that I would typically use from any clipper company. I'm not gonna grab someone else's clippers. If I have to go get another pair of clippers, I'll get them and use them straight out of the box because most of the time they're not zero gapped and I know that they don't work. I'm not gonna spend too much time debulking all of this and building the shape in this area because I'm going to do my lower refinement phase after my blow dry and I'm going to taper out his nape anyway. And I've identified some areas that might be a little heavier and that's okay. Everything we do before we blow dry with the Rusal way of cutting hair, we consider it a sketch. So we're gonna go back and refine everything afterwards. All right, so now we're gonna transition over to my non-dominant side. But first we're gonna check for balance. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And before that, we're gonna check for questions.
What clippers am I using? I'm using the Babelis Low Pro FX. I've got a wide variety of different brands of clippers, but I like using my Babelis Pros at the moment. Uh, it changes day to day, but usually my go-tos are Babelis. All right, so we're checking for balance. So above the ear, you can use a comb. Above the ear, I'm going to pull out and measure. I have about an inch and a half. This YS part comb, every two is about an inch. So I got about an inch and a half. I have about three eyelets there. So I'm going to go to the other side. Stay right to go up there. Pull out this side, my uncut side. And I'm going to start to visualize how much hair I need to cut off. Where my index finger is, is in between the third and, four, third and fourth eyelet. So I know I need to cut off maybe a half an inch, maybe. Um, I will tell you that everybody has a stronger side that you're gonna keep a little bit longer and one side is gonna be a little bit shorter. It just takes lots of practice to really hone in the accuracy of what you're cutting off. So I'll make a cut and then I'll show you something else that we can do to check for balance. Letting it down so I have more control when I cut. That way I don't have millions of little hair missiles shooting into my eyes and my patron's eyes when I cut him, cut his hair. Not cut Scott. And I'm gonna spin him back over here. All right, so just as before, center above the ear, pulling everything out nice and square. I said we have to take off about a half inch. My non-biometric eye, this looks like about a half an inch, and I'm gonna cut. Moving forward, my guide is behind me. Take a half step to my side. My guide is here. I have a half step around. Cone position is now starting to slightly angle down, mirroring my primary part. Here's my guide. I'm going to continue cutting. The second side is way easier to establish your baseline because you already have a predetermined length cut from a previous side. It's a little bit easier for new barbers and or and or anybody that's new to cutting the Rusal way of cutting hair. All right. So just rinse and repeat, exactly like we did on the opposite side. If there are any questions about anything, again, please drop them in the comment box below. Doesn't necessarily have to be the haircutting. I've I've been traveling all over. If you if you allow me to have a cool guy moment here for a second, that's in quotes. Um, again, I'm very fortunate to kind of start transitioning to more of the back of the house with the Rusal team, doing event and training management. So I've been all over the U.S. Uh, I went to Mexico and we just did a Rotterdam trip for training people and doing education this year. So if you have any questions about any of that. Feel free to ask anything. I've been very fortunate, hashtag blessed, to be able to travel and educate for a living. It's been very exciting. And speaking of traveling and educating, if you are interested in seeing some live in-person education, this week, Ruzel will be at BarberCon Atlanta. It'll be myself and our wonderful educator, Jenny Torres from Georgia. We will be at the Masquerade in Atlanta on Sunday. So if you're gonna be in the area, feel free to stop by, come to the booth, come hang out. I believe Jenny has two classes. We've got a main stage class and she had the VIP class. If you're gonna be at BarberCon Atlanta, uh, let us know.
and exactly the same as before. Make sure that their patron's neck is up nice and neutral position. And we're gonna keep trucking. So now we're working down the zone one, with our guide above us. It takes a little bit of time to get used to these techniques. I, uh, the only way I've really ever learned to cut hair was the Rusal old school Scorum way. I came out of barber school, didn't really have a system or structure in place as far as how I cut hair. Over the years, I've learned more and more, but a majority of my Rusal edu my, my barbering education has been because of Rusal. Taking some Sassoon courses here and there, I've gone to some other classes. But what's really worked for me and made sense for me cutting hair has really been the Rusal way of cutting hair. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. There's no wrong, no wrong question. There's my guide. Continuing just half stepping around the body. People are trying to get in. We're closed on Mondays. We're very aggressively opening the door too. And we're getting to our last section right in here. So we're going to change the angle of the comb, pulling the teeth out so I can still see the tips of the teeth at the top of the comb, or however I normally say it. And the guide, this area doesn't have to be the cleanest because we're going to taper it out anyway. All right, so a little bit of weight, some heaviness, that's fine. We're going to get in there and clean it up afterwards. Now let's get to the top. Probably my most favorite part of doing the haircuts, everything on top. So, all of our Rusal classic haircuts, they all have different names, right? Whether it's the razor faded pompadour, the psycho quiff, the scumpador, the scumbag boogie, the executive contour, the flat top, all of these names and all of these haircuts, all of these haircuts get their names, a majority of them from what's going on on the top of the head. You might have the other descriptors like the razor faded or the scumpador, which is a whole other creation. But majority of the haircuts get their name from what's going on on top. So this is the most important part of the haircut. Not saying that the sides aren't important because like I said earlier, the baseline length really determines what's gonna be going on on top. But all those really cool names, all the stuff you can do with your styling come from the length of the hair that you have on the top of the head. So we're gonna break the top of the head down into five or six sections, depending on how much of a perfectionist and section god you want to be. And honestly, it just depends on the density of the hair. So I'm gonna spin them around so I can check for balance in the mirror here. And then speaking of checking for balance, I'll show you this one thing before I do this. Let me show you real quick. All right, so traditionally barbers, back in the day, we all used to wear white barber jackets. At some point, we all became goth and emo kids and started wearing all black, because they've told you that that's what a barber shop and professional look is supposed to look like. Back in the day, we all, we all used to wear white barber smocks or have white towels on us. So I will always have a towel on me and a check for balance. I'll pull from above the ear. I pull from above the ear. Make sure I got the right section here and check for balance. I check above the ear, and then I also check in the back, in the back corners. You can do it visually, you can do it by feel. There's a bunch of different ways to check. So that's how I check for balance. All right, now we'll get back to cutting the length on top.
And if one side's shorter than the other, one side's longer, again, it's fine. This is the rough sketch of the haircut. We're gonna clean it up afterwards. So looking center, usually middle of the eyebrows. And we're gonna go from front to back and split the head in two halves. Clean it up as needed. Everybody's head shape and hairlines are gonna be different, so adjust as necessary. He's got a little bit of a cowlick in the center front of his hairline. I'm gonna adjust with that. So we split the head front to back, left and right sides. And now I'm going to split the head in half, the hair in half, not to split his head. So what I like to do is I find my high point of the head. So I set the comb on his apex where the head starts to round down will help you identify where the high point of the head is. So it's right here. So I'm gonna go from his apex to right behind the ear where the ear connects to the head. I'm gonna put a finger down and I'm gonna comb down to that finger so I can visualize where I'm going and so I can catch my comb. And just as I did with my primary parting, I'm going to split and I comb away from the hair that I'm holding down. As the hair starts to get shorter on the sides, it'll be a little bit tougher to make super, super clean partings, but as long as the hair on the top of the head is nice and clean. Then we're gonna go to the other side. Same thing, high point behind the ear. I'm gonna comb down to my finger. I'm gonna catch. I'm gonna gather it up, I'm gonna recomb. I comb away from the area that I'm holding. And then we're gonna check everything out on top here. Okay, so just as everything is changing, Russell has evolved and changed constantly over the last 11, 12 years, almost 12 years, many, many years. So we just recently put out Rizzo University and kind of made it, we took everything that we've done over the course of the years since 2013, since 2010 when the barber shop opened, we've consolidated everything in the one package of the simplest way to cut hair, the Rizzo way. So we've split the head, left side, right side. We've got crown sections. We're going to create our corner section. And by doing so, we're also going to create our front section. So over the past, however many Facebook lives you've seen over the last two or three years, it's changed. Well, it's changed once again. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now, instead of putting our thumb down to create our section off of the distance of our thumb to the part line, we're just gonna go right from the apex down to the corner. So similar to what it used to be. Get in there with your comb, nice and flat, create your nice section. The last educator training we were at in Rotterdam, somebody called it pizza slices. So it's just a bunch of triangles. I myself prefer stuffed crust pizza. So we've got crown, corner, front. We'll do the same thing on the other side. 
live television. And same on the opposite side. I find the natural recession, find that corner, and I comb from the apex down to my corner. So now we've got crown corner front on our left side as well. Clean anything up that needs to be cleaned up. The wavy hair can get kind of jumpy, it wants to move. So it's important to keep in mind when you're taking your sections, when you're connecting everything to have looser tension, because I don't want to pull too much, have too much tension, have his hair spring back, end up cutting too much off. So nice loose tension when we're connecting everything on the top of the head. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be working in horizontal sections in all of these preliminary parted areas. So we're going to work from above the baseline. We're gonna section our area out. Comb it out of the way. Two to three sections per area, depending on the density of the hair. I'm going to bundle up, gather up my baseline. I'm gonna come down from my part line, down to my baseline. I'm holding everything parallel, horizontal to the floor, combing down to my baseline. Nice, loose tension. I can check, I see my baselines right there. I'm just gonna cut. Make sure I'm grabbing just this section. Using the wider side of my comb because I want looser tension. And we like to start in the crown area moving forward because we're not working with what's gonna be disconnection. If we were to start up front and try to make our initial guide and work back, we're working with disconnection, it's not gonna be as accurate if we're working in the back and then moving forward. Again, check my guide and cut. And then we're gonna comb everything else down. If it reaches, awesome. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Like Scott said, our last haircut that we did together was a scumbag boogie, so I know some of this is gonna be shorter, but I most likely cut it with a flat topper. So nice loose tension, bringing it down. I see my guideline underneath. Again, body position is important. We're half stepping around the head. Working nice and square, combing everything down to the baseline. And there we are. So now when we comb everything back, blends, not too short, nothing's gonna be too jumpy unless it was super short from the last time. Now we're working, working from our crown into our corner section right here. And the same, just as we did with our last section, split it horizontal, comb it down. We are cutting everything symmetrically. With the exception being, well, we're cutting everything symmetrically, but when you get into your corner section, you have two guidelines. You have your baseline guide underneath, combing, gathering from underneath, combing down to your baseline. And then you start a second guide. Well, you'll slightly over direct back to increase that length as we move forward from just the section of the hair in the corner in front of the ear. Moving up in your corner section, comb everything down from the part line. Again, if it reaches, cool. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Comb everything back. Nice. All right, 
Apparently, I wanted to make it difficult on myself, so I made six sections. Still super easy. We're going to split our front section, T to the part, still working horizontal sections, combing that stuff down. Again, if it reaches, awesome. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. And now my guide is going to be that slight angle that I started working in on my corner section. His front's going to be super short already. I think we're growing out of crop and then went to a scumbag boogie. So really all I have to do is take out this corner right here. Here's my previous section from my corner, and we're going to cut and connect that. If the very front of that section does not reach down, that's fine. He said he wanted to keep the front area a little bit longer, so that's what we're going to be doing. Again, just that tiniest little section to cut. And now we're going to transition to the other side. And I'm going to do the shop speed because we only have so much time left in our presentation today. And since I'm the one that has to remind myself that I only have so much time left, I only have so much time left. Let's go. So this is before gather up, comb down to my baseline. Let's find my baseline, move all this hair out of the way. There's my baseline in there. My hand position is mirroring what my part, my primary parting was earlier. Gather, comb down, check for my guide. Don't cut too far into the palm of your hands because this little meaty bit right there bleeds like crazy. All right, take our last section, comb down. Find my guide, comb down to it. Just a little bit that we're cutting off. And if it's too heavy, it's okay. We're gonna refine it and clean it up. And if I may, I'm gonna cut the side a little bit faster, shop speed. People often ask how long does these haircuts actually take in the barber shop? Uh, our shop time for haircuts is about 45 minutes. And then when you cut the ruse away, I can do it in about 45 minutes. If I skip the shampoo, we offer shampoos at my barber shop. Again, pulling the section back, over directing slightly, have them turn their head a little bit so that I can get there and get to the part. It's gonna be that whole section. Comb it down. There's my guide. And we're gonna just snip. Is everybody gearing up for the holiday season? Thanksgiving is next week, I think. Everybody's busy in their shops right now, fully booked out. I hope you are. Hope you're all having a good holiday season. I'm just getting back to the swing of things myself. So I'm gonna get my butt kicked the next couple of days, go to BarberCon and then be here for the holidays. All right, after you connect everything to the sides and the top, you do one last thing on the top of the head. I'm going to take a center parting across the top of the head from front to back so I can establish my top length. What you may or may not know is that we've already somewhat established our top length by cutting the angle of the front, depending on the elevation that you use when you were connecting. I always tend to use a 45 degree angle when I'm connecting to my corner section. So you've already started making your top length. So I will pull everything up and then I know my baseline's back here. He's trying to grow his hair out, but he wants the front a little bit longer. So I'm starting to visualize that shape that I'm gonna cut into the head. I don't wanna go too short in the crown area. I'm gonna give a slight ramp in the front of the apex. His hair is pretty short on top. 
but that's the beauty of the executive contour. It doesn't have to be huge. And then once you get to the apex, I'm cutting everything to the head shape, pulling everything straight from the head out at 90 degrees. Once I establish my center, I'm going to pull from side to side. So side closest to me to center. To center. Now we're past the apex, so we'll round everything in the back. Side furthest from me. Now we've set the top line. So now let's get into some product. Let's get into some blow drying. The grooming tonic, the liquid gold, we know it, we love it. Absolutely necessary for what we do for the Rusal haircuts, for the plastic style of haircutting. Light hold, light shine, it acts as a foam for everything that we, a memory foam for the hair. It's gonna remember the shape of the hair that we just cut into it while we blow dry. So. Take a little bit of this, palm with my hand, pull in the palm of my hand. Combine it. I'm gonna massage it in from scalp to ends. Really working the service part of the haircut. It's the holiday season, maybe work those tips a little bit more. Massage that in. Make sure everything's thoroughly coated. Now we're getting blow drying. I'm gonna use a vented brush, a vented Demon brush, skeleton brush, however you might know it. As far as my blow dryer, high speed, medium heat. When we're blow drying, we're gonna work from the back moving forward. That was my aha moment when I went to Scumbassador training many years ago was that's how you maintain the shape and you build up the shape that you cut into your haircut. When I got out of barber school, I always used to just blow dry the front, try to emulate the photos that I saw on the posters and any of the videos, the styled looks for the videos. Um, once I learned that you blow dry from the back moving forward, you can actually see that shape build. It blew my mind. Um, I think I can talk and cut hair with this Dyson. I just recently got back from Rotterdam and in my time in Rotterdam, not only do we have an awesome training, but I also had the wonderful opportunity and privilege to work with Rob Burdett on a photo shoot. And there's so many different things that you can do as far as styling hair for a photo shoot. And it, it, it's crazy to see what you can create with just water and a little bit of product. I'm really excited to share those and share those with everybody in the future. I don't know when they're working on getting that out, but I know Yella is editing everything and it's absolutely amazing. So you guys will all see it in the next couple of weeks on our wonderful model that you saw for the advertisement for this class. So what I'm doing is I'm letting the blow dryer do all the work. I'm just placing the hair with my brush, working from the back, moving forward. Don't need a lot of volume for an executive contour. But as I move towards the front of the head, I'm going to put in a little bit. When I get to the ear, instead of just blow drying straight back, I'm going to angle my blower, my blow dryer up a little bit. I don't want to blow dry his wave out too much. And as I move towards the front, take the teeth of my brush. Grip it a little bit, grip it and rip it, flip it on out.
I will say be careful with how much grooming tonic you use and you can use too much. A little bit goes a long way. It seems as if we use just enough. And he's going to wear a part in his hair. Go ahead and find that part. You can blow dry your part in first. You don't always have to, but you can. I'm going to blow dry everything back and we'll find the part when we're styling. But when you transition to the other side, switch hands with your blow dryer and your brush. That way you're not blow drying hair all, your body all contorted. And just follow your brush like the train is the boost, drying everything. If the hair still feels cool to the touch, it's not dry yet. This is the part where I always have to remind myself to slow down just a little bit, really ensure that the hair is nice and dry. I like using a concentrator nozzle when I'm blow drying to really focus the hair that's getting blow dried, really focus the air on the hair that I want it to focus on so it's blowing all over the place. drying over and styling over. So go ahead and start that. Picking out any cool areas. Everything seems nice and dry. Now let's get into our lower and upper refinement. Check for some questions real quick. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. So, lower and upper refinement. So what we're going to be doing with our blending scissors is we're going to be removing weight, adding texture, and taking out anything that seems as if it's a bit heavy. In my experience, those areas are usually the areas that we connected everything with horizontal sections. So it's going to be all of our transition zones. So there's a little bit of weight in here. You can see that. When we're using our blending scissors, we're only focusing on the last third of the hair shaft, as that will allow us to remove weight and blend. If we were to cut hair in the middle of the hair shaft, that's going to add support. And that short hair pushes that long hair, so sometimes that's necessary to give them that pompadour look or that voluminous look without a lot of blow dryer, a lot of product. You can go mid hair shaft and cut some shorter bits in there so that short hair will push that long hair. So when we're going through and we're using blenders, remember that we're just hitting that last third of the hair shaft. Still the, teeth, the tips of my comb are coming out, so I'm not gonna gap him, I'm not gonna cut in any chunks. And we're coming up straight off of the head on the sides, because we still wanna maintain that nice square shape that we cut in there with our baseline. We brush everything back. Here's the thing with the executive contour, most likely gonna be styled side to side, but we blow dried everything back. So I will comb everything back, Cut where I see weight. Still right off of the head shape. But then I also comb all his hair to the side where I'm going to see that buildup of weight and then blend this way as well. So no matter which way he decides he wants to wear his hair for the day, it's still gonna look nice and blended. Little, little key tip there. So there's a little bit of weight right here. 
go in there and cut that out. We might go over a little bit in time, but that's okay. I've been trying to answer your questions and get this haircut going. So this hair will stay where I set it. So it's important to comb up and then comb back down so I can identify that weight again. He had some small jumpy bits where his part was at initially. Just keeping that in mind. And we're gonna go through and clean it up. So we'll do this on the sides, we'll do this on the top, and then we'll go and taper out his neck and we'll line up all his contours and outlines. And then of course we'll style them with the crease. Now as far as the top goes, just as you would any other classic Rudel haircut, Refine the top. I work my way across the top of the hair, making sure that I'm not staying stationary because I don't, again, I don't want to gap it. I don't want to chunk anything out. And I'll continue from the front to the back on the top. I think I watched Milky do this once before and it's kind of stuck with me. I'll come in. Refine that, clean that up. So I'll work my left side, move to my right side, and the same thing. When you hit the ends of the hair with your blenders, it shatters the ends, and I feel like it almost creates a Velcro-like substance so the hair will lock into the other shattered ends of the cuticle on the hair shafts. So it makes it a little bit easier for the hair to grip one another and hold its shape. Looks good, feels good. If you want to, you can go through to the bloody knuckles, depending on how thick the hair feels. Scott's hair looks, feels good. So let's get into some lower refinement real quick. We'll go ahead and taper out his neck. You can lower refine with clippers, you can refine with blenders, whatever you would like to do. The cool thing about the executive contour, if you're talking technically, like the primary technical focus of this haircut is going to be horizontal transitions and clipper over comb work. So you're introducing clipper over comb work when you're doing these techniques. Open up my clipper, go around his ear. Working from the hairline in the back, still open clipper. Around the ear, still open. Moving to the other side. Let's get this taper in. So for the tapers as well, look down some. So just make sure that this is gonna be a true one and a half guard. So at Ruzel for the longest time, we didn't use guards. I went to the old school, and I went to Scorum in 2008, and I walked in the barber shop, and to my surprise, they were using guards for some haircuts. Now guards are a great tool. They were invented for a reason. It's because it makes the haircut, haircutting process faster, it makes the fading process faster. When we use guards with Rusal, their sole purpose is refinement, not necessarily weight removal. So I will taper his neckline with guard just a little bit. 
So just as I started my baseline in the center, when I do a taper, I got my close flipper. I'm going to start center. I got a one, two, three finger rule, right? It's got those occipitals right here. It's actually sunken just slightly. So we kept that a little bit heavier so it'll cover the sunken occipital. But I have a one, two, three finger rule when I'm doing my tapers, right? One finger, two finger, or three fingers. No higher, not any higher than the occipital. So I'm keeping it underneath his occipital bone, which is right here. Close slipper, I start center, flick up about a finger's width from the hairline. So I start center, and then I'll move right, moving the chair. You can also sidestep over. And then move left. So I've set my line for my taper. I'll take my one guard, I'll flick up past this closed clipper line, up into where my clipper over comb work is, making sure that I have enough space to work underneath it to continue the blend. Another reason I use guards on Scott's neckline, majority of the time because he has that crazy hairline growth pattern and the crazy growth pattern once you get into his hair, which I learned the very first time I cut his hair. So closed flipper, flicking in, or flicking out, excuse me. Open halfway. Starting center, again, moving right and then left. Coming off of that mastoid bone, center and then left. I'm only going up about a quarter to a half an inch, depending on what the blend looks like it needs. So I'm gonna open up my clipper all the way, going into where my over comb work I've completed. Now you might create a little bit of a shelf building up a little bit of weight as you're doing this. You can go back with flipper over comb and knock that out. Transitioning to my half guard. And we're starting the process all over again, closed. Looking out this bottom line. So when we do our fading and we do our clipper cutting techniques when we're doing rusal hair cutting, we do a descending guard, ascending lever. So we start with our largest guard and we'll work down to our lowest guard. And while we're using every single guard number, so I just started with a one and I went down to my half, you start close lever and then you open up your lever halfway as you work within that section. So, halfway. You don't always have to use the half guard. Depends on what the hair calls for. For me, it's usually the color and density. Open up my clipper all the way and flick up into that one. Last step. Instead of going to halfway open, I'm gonna to jump to all the way open, flick into that open flipper, come down against the growth pattern. He does redden up a little bit. So watch your pressure. Now I'm gonna close halfway and then flick out the very, very bottom. A little bit of weight we created with that one guard. So just come back in and clean it up. I'm gonna do it on one side. I wanna also do on the other side. So just continuing the cleanup. The weight line that was built.
And the last thing with my flippers, go ahead and outline and hit my contours. And then we'll use some product. Normally I would ask what product you guys want to see, but for the sake of time and me running the show today, I've already chosen my products. And we're going to go with a mixture of the play matte pomade and the green medium hold grease pomade. And I like to cocktail these two together. It's a great way to introduce grease based products to your patrons by cocktailing with something that is water soluble. And what that does is that once you use the degreasing trio of the scrub shampoo, the daily conditioner, followed by the daily shampoo and or the three in one tea tree, is that the water soluble product that is your base product will rinse right out. I didn't necessarily use the clay mat as a product as a base because I wanted a matte finish. I just wanted that grip that play mat adds to a haircut. It kind of thickens it up a little bit. Scott has like medium fine hair. It's kind of his hair is kind of everything. Like it's kind of coarse, it's kind of medium, kind of fine. But I just really love working with play based pomades. The play mat being a hybrid, of course, because it's got actually it's not a hybrid, excuse me. It's just got the KOM in there. So as my base, we use the play mat. One knuckles worth. That's a knuckle. Not one of these. One knuckle. It's a little bit, just a little bit. So take that product, the palm of my hand, with that new fancy wedding ring. Palm of my hand, emulsify, cover my hands in product. And you want to look as if you just pressed your hands upon a freshly painted wall. And I'm going to take the product and work it into Scott's hair. Working from scalp to ends, working the inside to the outside, from the front, from the back to the front. And then you want to hit the sides. Now, when you're working the sides, Remember zone three, this area right here. Be careful that you don't really get down into your fade because that hair being shorter is gonna be a pain in the butt to have to pick back out. So, once you add your first product, go through and add your second product. We're getting to the bottom of the barrel on this green grease here. So another one knuckles worth. I really like the green pomade because of how malleable it is. You can really shape a haircut with the green grease. Heat it up. If it's chunky, it's not heated up enough. All right. And again, working from the crown forward from the inside to the outside. But because we have that water soluble base, as I mentioned, once your patrons break through, that grease shield on top, the product will rinse right out. Use those neck muscles, baby. It's falling asleep on me. Once you've got all the product in there, I like to recommend everybody uses a metal pick. What the metal pick does is it actually helps you cut through any sort of grease-based products. And then you can style with your styling comb. Combing everything into place, breaking through all that grease, evenly dispersing product throughout the hair. It's what we want. Looking good. Now we'll use our styling comb, 
really set that parting line. Not going to go super off center. Let comb that in the place using the wider side of my comb, the wider teeth here. This ambassador of ours once told me, uh, Michael Martin from Nashville once gave me the advice that if you want the comb to do all of the work. So you'll get in there, like 70% comb, 20% your hand, get in there, let the comb do the work, and then just tap everything else in to place. And then just your last little details towards the end. Clean it up, put everything in place. And there is our executive contour. All right, and just to recap, before we go, started everything with the baseline working down. We set our primary parting, baseline working down, right side to the left side. We set up our preliminary partings on top, five to six sections, depending on how fancy you want to be. Connected everything from the top to the back and sides with horizontal graduation, horizontal sections, working down, pulling down to your baseline, established our top length. We blow dry it again from the back to the front. And then we lower refined and upper refinement with our blending scissors. We did our taper with some clippers, and that's our executive contour. If I wasn't able to get to your question, I'll jump on there later and I'll answer everybody's questions and I'll respond. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today at Perusal Live. Uh, thanks to Scott, my model, Chase, my cameraman. And thank you all to you for spending your Monday morning or evening with us at Perusal here. I hope that you took something from this presentation today and feel free to tune in next week on the 21st, 21st. We've got Jacob Bain from St. Louis and then I'll be back behind the camera. So I won't be out in front of it. Uh, again, thank you so much. My name is Nicholas Gibberson with Russell Education. We will catch you next week. Goodbye.